Hey everybody, Fishman here. Welcome to another video. And this is definitely a video that is not going to turn out how I originally intended. Uh, this was supposedly a non-functional LED strip that I put together for a client. It was uh, an old fluorescent canopy that I had gutted because it wasn't working and I had put this together for them to fit inside their old canopy. And it is running uh, quite nicely for a few years. Uh, a couple of years actually, sorry. I'll see if I can find the link to the video I put up for it and I'll put it below. Uh, so I took it out and I'm going to go through the paces I always do whenever I get something that's not working. I always like to figure out uh, what the problem is before I uh, go and tear it apart. So what I've done here first off is I hooked up a power supply and um, applied the, the terminals to it and obviously the tape works. And then I plugged it in and it didn't work initially but the second I touched it uh, there was enough of a static change uh, that it fired up and then I'm going to unplug it and plug it in a few times here. It just keeps on working. I'm not entirely sure uh, what that was about. Uh, I suspect it's just been sitting dormant for a little while and it just needed a little bit of a kick to get going. Uh, but the power supply on this is perfectly fine. So the next thought I have is uh, maybe there is a loose connection because I've been hauling it around. As you can see, the wires are all wrapped up. Uh, maybe that's just forcing the connections together. So what I'm going to do here is uh, take off uh, the uh, silicone sealant I put on there. Uh, one looks like it's going to fall off anyway. And then I'm going to test to see if uh, the connections are solid. And then I'm going to plug it in. And I'm going to use a pair of tweezers and uh, wiggle each one and uh, just to make sure that uh, there isn't a loose connection. Now, loose connections are the easiest things to fix. Uh, it's just a simple matter of just soldering it again, and it's usually not a problem. Uh, one of the things I should probably apologize about this video is there's going to be an awful lot of these glary scenes. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I hadn't realized as I was uh, doing this that it was such a bad glare. Uh, again, my apologies for that. So I'm going to go here as I'm going to uh, take the tweezers and manipulate each of those, and they themselves are actually quite solid. And you're not going to believe what the problem was for this. It has nothing to do with this fixture. It was the timer. The timers, uh, I mean, timers in general uh, usually last quite a long time. I have had issues with them. Uh, a couple times some people have stolen the pins out of the old ones that had the, the old the gray and red ones and they just never turned on or turned off and just kept going around and around. I've had a few of them burn out, of course, and uh, some of the digital ones uh, have a different way of setting it now. It's either on or on timer, and sometimes people will uh, want to use the uh, outlet, so they'll unplug it, and during that process they'll put it back in, and they'll switch it to on because they think, well, it needs to be on, and they're on all the time. You end up with all kinds of nice algae problems when that happens. And sometimes, of course, uh, they just burn out. They don't keep uh, time, or they just stop. In this particular case, uh, it was a different problem. The on pin, uh, the, the gray one you see there, was just raised a little bit. It had jiggled loose and it never turned on. That's it. That was the whole problem for this. A very simple fix, obviously. Uh, I may just replace that timer. Currently it is plugged in the shop. I'm going to see if it actually keeps time. And then I'll plug it into something as well and make sure that uh, the pins they're just little plastic things, so they can eventually uh, just become loose or get a bit of wear on them so that they pop out. Uh, I'm going to test that out, and if it's fine, I'll use it, and if it ever, of course, becomes an issue again, I'll just replace the timer. They're about uh, $16, I think, for this one. Uh, you have to get the three prong ones for aquariums because you need the ground, uh, but again, we'll just see how that goes. So th this is perfectly fine. So. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to show you something I was originally planning to do for this. I was going to test out uh, an LED strip system that I picked up on Amazon last year when basically nothing was available. It was very difficult to get any kind of supplies in, so I thought I wasn't going to be able to get the LED strips that I currently use and uh, or was using before then, and I thought, well, okay, better see what I can find. And this was pretty much the best one I could find that was a reasonable price. It is, uh, I think at the time, $25 for this whole setup here. There's a fair amount of tape. Uh, but as it turns out, 
it is considerably less bright. It's not very obvious on the camera. As I, was, as I was doing this, I was checking to see what was being recorded and trying to see if it was picking it up enough. Uh, but with the naked eye, there is a drastic difference. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you uh, once more. I'm not going to move anything. It's going to take the uh, new tape off and plug it back in. And as you can see, it is it's brighter, but the actual difference is not uh, showing up anywhere near as much. So I'm going to redo this one more time. And what I'm going to do instead is I am going to put a light meter on this and give you some numbers for it. Now, obviously, uh, extra light is not... Uh, the most important thing uh, for growing plants and stuff like that it depends on a whole pile of things but I don't really want to get into all that because it gets really complicated into biochemistry and other stuff and it's not really that necessary so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up an aquarium I'm gonna try these lights out on it if I can find a spotter in the fish room that's not uh, you know overwhelmed with light to begin with and we'll, we'll see what I can do about that so you saw there uh, the numbers were about 170 150 depending uh, is a bit varied and of course when I turned it to face down on the tape it was much higher so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this all off and I'm gonna set it all up uh, with the original and you're gonna see that the numbers are roughly three times the amount of light given off than the other tape. The, quality, the light quality seems to be roughly the same. Uh, I thought the tape, the new tape, would be a little bit more yellow, uh, but it's reasonably close. Uh, it is definitely around uh, 6K, whereas the one I use is 10. Uh, once you get closer to 5, it turns a lot more yellow, uh, but I didn't notice any of that. <coughs> Again, I didn't, I don't have the expensive meters to show you uh, any kind of spectrum changes, but Anyway, it is something I'm going to do a little bit more about, and of course, I did this because, well, I don't really need to fix this one, <clears throat> even though I probably would have put that tape on it and tried it in the client's tank, but I don't have to do that now, so it'll be for something in the future. So definitely leave comments, let me know what you think of all this. Uh, cheap tapes uh, do have their place, um, and it is, like I said, it's affordable, um, but... Anyway, I have to actually set it up and use it for a while to actually see if it's worthwhile because it may not even last more than a little bit of time. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. Uh, like I said, leave comments. Uh, let me know what you think of all this. And as you can see there, it was almost 500, which is considerably more than the 150 to 170 the other one's giving off. So I'll see you in the next video, and bye for now.